Yo guys, welcome back to another Albion Online video. If you didn't know, the test server patch notes, Rise of Avalon patch 7, just landed like a couple of days ago. So I've, I've skimmed through them and we're going to go over them right now in like proper detail. So you can see my viewpoints on the upcoming changes and uh, what the patch note brings. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so as you can see here, it was released Monday. 6 37 pm and this is the rise of avalon patch 7. so corrupted dungeons new boss enemies and traps to improve the depth and variety of corrupted dungeons gameplay new enemies and traps have been added and behavior of existing mobs and traps have been updated new boss demonic harbinger especially powerful and wrathful demon general wields a massive sword that inflicts heavy bash slash and shockwave damage New enemies, Hellhound, a relatively weak enemy that can call other Hellhounds to help fight. Demonic Mauler, a demon with strong regenerative powers that can even consume its allies to heal itself. Demonic Predator, a variant of spike demons that jump at the enemies and slow them. And Deranged Heretic Arbalist, a new corrupted dungeon heretic fighter that wields dual crossbows. So I was on the test server yesterday over on my stream and I did manage to test uh, the new boss and the new enemies out. Uh, the new boss is really good if you're a melee weapon because it does quite a lot of, um, how, how would you say? It does quite a lot of like area effects on the ground. So if you're at ranged, dodging is going to take more effort. But if you're close up and personal, you can just like move around. So. Uh, melees have a better time with the boss so far i've only tested it a couple of hours the hellhound um it's a really interesting enemy so the hellhound has like a two three times bigger leash range than normal mobs and it can call other mobs to help it like it can call other mobs to come and help it fight you so like running away got a little bit more difficult because the leash range has increased by two to three times they have relatively good like movement speed so they can keep on you and they have like a rage mechanic from what i've tested like every time they attack it, they get more um attack speed so there's that and then the demonic mauler um it can consume its allies to heal itself but when i was fighting it i didn't see it do that and the demonic obelisk it's like um a mob with bolt casters and they use the bolt casters and it has like a like a fury stack you see like three swords going around it and once it hits like three swords i think after every five seconds it shoots like a bolt caster animation it shoots it in um like a three line shot so like one in the middle and then two on the side uh new traps abyssal impaler a nasty spike trap that completely ignores armor so there's um, a new portion like when you're walking through the corrupted dungeons say like that's the portion you have like six different dots like spike traps and three will jump up and the other three will jump up and it's just the same three it's not um random it's just like a pair so like one pair of three will jump up and the other pair of three will jump up uh, infernal breach a crack in the ground that releases waves of molten magma so this is pretty cool say there's like long corridors like this is the long corridor in one of the corrupted dungeons maps it shoots the molten all the way from the top of the corridor all the way down to the bottom and with these traps there's normally three so like uh left middle and right and these traps are random so you can have like left and right then you can have middle then you can have left and middle and then like right and middle but these ones are random and the thing is if you get hit by them you get slowed and if you're fighting in this corridor and you don't pay attention to the traps it can be deadly because they do like not a huge amount of damage but it can stack up over time and it slows you so if you're not paying attention running away or like chasing you could actually be put in a position to um have the enemy counter like prepared to counter on you depending on how much damage you take but yeah um corrupted dungeon changes demonic shards shard health doubled on slayer difficulty this is a good change it's just it makes it more so you can that you want to fight in slayer demonic warlock boss rupture firewall is now in fixed slow instead of knockback i hate the knockback so i like this change 
Phase change now is more diverse and teleport circle is a bit smaller. Yeah, so I like this. The teleportation circle smaller because normally it's like pretty big and now it's a bit smaller. Uh, the Demon Lord mini boss rage bonus damage 100 to 75%. Invincibility removed during the rage cast. Okay, so this is good because normally you wouldn't be able to deal damage to it when it was casting rage. And when it did rage at like 25% hit points. Um, it just deal insane amount of damage. And if you got hit by one of its like AOE circle um, attacks, it deal like 800 to 1000 damage and it'll knock you down instantly. Silence hazard effect area now starts out as small and grows over time. This is an interesting change. Um, when I was testing it yesterday, it starts off as like a small circle and then slowly over time grows big. But it's roughly the same duration as the what it was before. But it just starts in the middle now and grows outwards. The outer ring has been removed. Purple cloud now indicates the area of effect. So if you're not standing in the purple cloud, um, you don't get silenced. But when it grows over time and you step into it, you get silenced. Knockback hazard, area duration 0.7 to 0.2. Uh, that's a pretty good change. Was like hitting them by accident made you go flying and now grant the player infamy and fame from any mob that killed it there you go that's a good change because when you killed a mob using knockback hazard it wouldn't give you the fame or the infamy points towards the progression bar when you killed it so that's a good change um, heretic thief fan of knives spell behavior improved when cast next to a wall so i didn't really notice this have an effect before but it looks like they've increased it so it actually works now if they if you put the mob next to the wall or you're fighting it near the wall demonic slaver mob size slightly increased i'm guessing that's the the chain chain mobs i hate the chain mobs but next uh, that was all the corrupted dungeon changes now we're on to the small cluster queue changes this is mainly for i think zvz right and like small scale so the following changes are intended to give players more control over how they set up their armies for smart cluster queue changes. Oh, not small cluster queue, it's smart cluster queue. Player sorting in queue is now done by a per party level, meaning the system will attempt to keep existing parties together as follows. Oh, that is a good change. So you won't have like party one who pretty much will normally has all the like good players in party one with like the main shot caller, the leader, and all the people that had damage, high DPS, all the tanks that know what they're doing. So if this changes to keep that party together and doesn't zone in like party two or three, then it's going to be a lot more interesting because then you can make parties like focused for a certain thing. And if they get in, they can do that tactic. So party leaders can now assign a party cluster access priority for the party as well as an individual member in the cluster queue access priority UI via the party leader player context menu. That's pretty cool. Priority access determines in order which the parties will enter a overcrowded cluster. So it's kind of like first come, first serve. Uh, well, not first come, first serve, but you know. The, the more of your party that gets there, they have the priority of going through. This gives alliances more control over which fight forces are moved into clusters and keeps their party structures intact. Good change. The preferred cluster access guild right has been removed. Okay. The queue now moves players from one contingent either in or out during a given cycle, meaning players of the same contingent will no longer replace each other. Okay, disarray Zerg debuff changes. The new disarray parameters ensure that ZVZ meta plays out in a similar way across a wide range of fight sizes, while still providing small groups with the same protection for large from large armies. This array is no longer a flat buff. Ooh, okay. Instead, it reduces your damage output and CC duration when you attack a target with a low disarray level. Attacking someone with the same or higher disarray level has no impact. The damage reduction depends on the difference of disarray levels between the attacking and the target. The higher the difference, the greater the effect. Okay, so say you're on like level one and they're on like level four. So you have like a better, better advantage. Remove the disarray hard cap of 150 players. Debuff now caps at level 50 for 450 players. Okay, so it's not player based now, it's level based, and the highest is level 50 for 450 players. Okay. This change, this change is crazy. 
I was testing the new food. I haven't tested the new fish, but if you are a Twitch viewer and you watch Pathos, he's the fishing guy and he's, I bet he's going to love this change. So there's new fish and increased fishing opportunities in the roads of Avila, Albula. Yep. So there's new fish and increased fishing opportunities in the roads of Avalon. Fishable areas can now be found in every roads of Avalon zone. Three new fish species exclusive to the roads of Avalon have been introduced. White Fox Snapper Tier 3, Clear Haze Snapper Tier 5, Pure Mist Snapper Tier 7. These fish can be turned into chopped fish as normal or used in new cooking recipes. See next section. So this change, you get a new food lane. And if you craft food, this is a huge change because you get an extra line, which gives you extra focus cost reduction if you max it, which in turn gives you like more profit. Cause now you have, instead of eight lines, you have nine lines and that gives you a 3000, not 3000, yeah, 3000 focus cost reduction to crafting other foods. So if you 900, 900 foods and you have 900, um, 800, 800 potions and in alchemist, it's going to be better to craft foods for your focus because you're going to get the extra buff to the focus cost reduction. So new food line, roasts. Raw chicken, goose and pork can now be roasted to create three new foods. Roast chicken, tier 5. Roast goose, tier... Roast chicken, tier 3. Roast goose, tier 5. And roast pork, tier 7. These three foods give life steal that increases with their tier and enchantment level. These recipes require the base milk, meat and crop the new fish species listed above can now be roasted to create roasted white fox snapper tier 3 roasted clear haze snapper tier 5 and roasted pure mist snapper tier 7 these three foods give life steal and increased max health that increases with tier and enchantment level these recipes require the base fish crop herb and milk corresponding destiny boards nodes have been added and updated as follows Tier 3 roasts are now available to create with the unlock of Sue Chef Destiny Board node. High level roasts are unlocked by processing in the Chef Destiny Board node. And new specialization node Roast Chef has been added to the Chef Destiny bar, uh, Board node. Like all other foods, roasts can be enchanted with fish sauce. So the new lifestyle food, it's not game breaking, but it is game changing. I was in the test server yesterday for like i think two and a half hours and i was testing out random things and one of the things i was testing out was this lifestyle food and um i have a new video it should be coming out tomorrow if i can get it finished editing today but uh just a quick not a spoiler but let's just say uh one not one-handed let's just say that solo group dungeons are back with this lifestyle food I'll be releasing a video tomorrow to explain more on that. But the new Hardcore Expedition levels added. Added three levels of Hardcore Expeditions on top of the current 15. The difficulty of each of these levels 16 to 18 is approximately 5% higher than their predecessing level with the reward scale accordingly. Fishing a level 18 Expedition in time rewards a valuable loot chest. In finishing a level 18 Expedition in time rewards a valuable loot chest instead of a new expedition map so this change right here has caused the hce community to go crazy because they can no longer get a map back and just keep redoing the hces but now they actually have to buy the maps they get loot instead but if you continue looking at this patch notes forum post all the hce people do not like this change uh, i'll leave the the link to the forum post in the description and comment sections below. Visual map remarks, mini maps for selected zone types have been updated to improve the visual quality and readability and to look and feel more consistent with the overall gameplay aesthetic. Affected zones, all city maps including royal cities, outland cities and starter zones, player islands, guild islands, city banks and city marketplaces. So the changes look good, they look more vibrant, um, just updated graphics in general. Crafting change, item quality preserved. Faction capes and royal armors now retain the quality of the cape and armor used to craft them. So as soon as I saw this change here, I went to all the royal cities to check for tier 4 masterful capes and tier 5 masterpiece capes. And um, somebody had already bought them out. So somebody's already preparing for this change. 
Why? Because as soon as this change kicks in, you could just have flat four tier four masterpiece capes, enchant them to 4.3 and craft them into the faction capes. And that's just easy 4.3 faction uh, masterpiece capes. Tier four and tier five. I didn't check tier 6 and all that because it gets a bit expensive after that. But yeah, someone's already bought out all the masterpiece capes. I haven't checked arms. As faction capes do not benefit from or contribute to the cap tailoring specialization, fame gained was removed from this crafting process to keep it in line with other conversion processes such as royal armors. Increased crafting focus cost of bread to be in line with the nutritional value of other crafting recipes. So right now you want to craft bread because the focus cost has been increased. So right now is a good time to stock up on your bread because the focus cost will increase later on. Crafting changes, butchery focus. Farm animals can now be butchered with focus to get more meat. You don't get your animal back, it's dead. There's no coming back from that. So if you want more meat, um, you can use focus to get more meat, but you don't get the animal back. Pretty simple. A part of this change, the nutritional value of meat has been adjusted to better reflect the overall crafting progression. That's good to know. So if you already have this maxed, it doesn't affect you. But if you're leveling up, you can now use focus to get more meat in the process. Updated mob spells. Additional unique spells for each resource mob type in Rozo Avalon. Cougar pounces at the target position. Forest spirit uh, deploys a line of three piercing roots. Ooh, okay. Rock element summons a rock wall. All elemental summons a triangle of three exploding crystals. Dryad summons a poison cloud. The Avalonian Wizard spell updates. Avalonian Wizard Bomb now gives you a warning time to leave its damage area. Bomb damage is reduced by 20%. Pulls after casting a bomb is increased from 5 to 7 seconds. So I don't really do the Rods of Avalon, but I'm guessing this uh, just instant shotted you. That's why they give you a warning now and the damage is reduced. Improvements. Any integrated IME keyboard input system generally affecting the input of non-Western languages has been added to the game. Oh, nice. So this case is for people with non-English keyboards. This option can be turned on and off in settings. Using the game native IME input versus the Windows overlay solves the issue that existed for certain screen resolutions. That's pretty good. Good change for people that had that issue. Added a pre-language profanity filter that can be turned on and off. Well, this game is toxic, so that's a good change. Updated spell icons for the following e-slots. Double Blade Staff, Crescent Smash, Black Monk Staff, Fatal Blade. Incubus May, Shrinking Curse, Curse Skull, Haunting Screams, Damnation Staff, Cataclysm, Infernal Staff, Contagious Fire, Wildfire Staff, Magma Spear, and Great Holy Staff, Holy Explosion. Satchel of Insight Changes. Crafting Satchels of Insight now only require a Tome of Insight instead of a randomized dungeon map. Okay, so this change affects anybody that was stockpiling maps, and if you go down here, Boogle or Boggle, however you say it, the Merchant of the Mist founder, he's stockpiled two rows of maps. So he's got six stacks of tier 8 maps and two stacks of tier 7 maps. Pretty much full. This is at 913, but he's been affected quite a bit because the map prices are going to drop. And maybe the Tome of Insight prices are going to go up because uh, they're used in crafting requirements now. But the change also reverts a prior change to increase drop rate of flat tier 4 randomized dungeon maps. Okay, so you won't get as much randomized dungeon maps tier 4. But uh, the Tome of Insight drops are the same, so they're pretty, they're pretty common. And uh, the maps will go back down in price, is what I'm guessing. Other changes, the gathering speed penalty, we're gathering with a tool one tier lower than the resource has been reduced by half. Ooh! Meaning gathering resources once you're above the tool will now be faster. So it's a 50% increase. It's no longer half the speed. It's a 75% speed. This is good. So now you can actually gather tier above and not be losing fame. Or like time was the main thing. Combat balance changes for the current list of intended balance changes. This patch. Please see the NDA balance place test from this thread here. So you can click on here if you want to see the NDA. Fixes. Corrected the terrain issue in Timber Slope Den. Note players in this zone with the patches deployed will be moved to the nearest exit. Crafting slider now accurately shows the correct number of craftable items, e.g. in a unit of five for healing potions, and the input box now corrects invalid values. That's good, because that sometimes confused me when I was crafting. Numerous additional small graphical animational terrain, audio, UI, and localization fixes. 
So this is really good for a mid-season patch. This is like, uh, I wasn't expecting like the corrupted dungeons changes. This is a huge change because what I stream and what I do in the game right now is just corrupted dungeons and money making guides. So this change I really like. The smart cluster queue changes. I don't really ZVZ now much. I do uh, do reset day because reset day is always fun. So that doesn't affect me as much, but it affects the big guilds that are ZVZ. Not small, smart. This ray, um, yeah, this affects main big guilds and people that fight in like large DVZ meta plays. So not really much for me here. The new fish, I don't fish, but this change is going to be interesting, mainly because of the food lane. The roasts, I, I love the new lifestyle food. Um, the video will be coming out tomorrow showing you why. Hardcore Expedition, I don't do Hardcore Expedition, so this isn't much of a change for me. Visual map's always good, and the rest of the stuff is pretty good. So yeah, those are the current patch notes for the Rise of Avalon patch 7. So hopefully this helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to pop into my Discord server. I try to help out new people and beginners get up to speed with like money making guides and get up to date with the game so you can actually enjoy the game and not log in every day and make grinding silver or chore. If you have any questions, feel free to pop in there, ask me questions, I'll get back to you when I have free time, or if not, somebody else from the server can um, answer your questions for you. I stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on Twitch at 8pm UTC, so if you want to pop in and say hi, feel free. If you have any questions, you can just pop in and thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next Albion Online video.